Hi, this is Daniel Hens with the Flood Control District of Maricopa County, and we're here to talk about the 2020 Monsoon Outlook. The season officially runs from June 15th to September 30th. If you've lived here in the valley, you know that even though when we get to Monday on June 15th, it's still gonna be hot and dry. So what we call the onset, or when thunderstorms and moisture actually arrive up into this part of the state, usually it doesn't happen until later. In fact, it's usually around July 7th or the 4th of July weekend. And the way that used to be measured was three consecutive days with a dew point of 55 degrees and that would officially kick off the monsoon. But now we've just to basically try and get the state all in unison, June 15th to September 30th. So when it comes to how much rain we get through the monsoon, this part of Arizona, it's usually about 30 to 40% of their total for the year. And when measured at Phoenix Sky Harbor, the official monitoring station for Phoenix, that comes out 2.71 inches. But then if we look at all of the rain that falls on average around the entire county, it's actually closer to three inches. Our, our 30 year average here is 2.97 inches. What you're looking at here is the last 37 years worth of rainfall for monsoon seasons. This is data when averaged across all of our alert gauges. And you can see it actually has this kind of roller coaster look. The far left of the graph is 1983. The far right was last season in 2019. Um, of note, it's always like to point out 2014 there, we actually had uh, nearly seven inches of rain, which is almost double, no, more than double than what we typically see. And then again, a really dry year in 2019, actually at the airport, we received 0.66 inches of rain, which was very, very dry. Um, but when average across the county, because we had a late season, uh, big major event, we got closer to normal. We were just over two and a half inches. Let's take a look at the monsoon in general and the basic principles behind what's going on here. In general, for most of the year, winds blow from west to east. However, when we go to the North American monsoon in the summer, July through September, the winds actually change from more out of the south to southeast. The main driver behind that is intense heating during the summer months across central Mexico. It actually helps drive a 500 millibar ridge north up into the desert southwest. Clockwise flow around that high helps to bring moisture north into Arizona from Mexico as well as the Gulf of Mexico. As well, we also get this thermal heat low in the southwest part of Arizona that moves moisture north into Arizona out of the Gulf of uh, California. So when you get enough moisture, you finally get thunderstorms over the higher terrain. And eventually when we get enough of the moisture, and we have some of the forcing mechanisms like outflow boundaries from the higher terrain that can actually get us thunderstorms down here in the valley. That's what we like to see. But the main feature of this is that monsoon ridge. That ridge location is really key in determining uh, favorable patterns for us to see rain. We have four historical favorable ridge locations. So the, the, the setup I just described is what we call our four corners high and it's most typically seen in the, the main part of the monsoon. But we can also see, for example, the Great Basin High which is right here, where the ridge kind of shifts further north and west, maybe setting up over Las Vegas. And that's actually when we tend to see a lot of our rim to valley setups. So the big intense thunderstorms up across uh, Gila County that make their way down into the valley in the evening. We typically tend to see lots of wind and heavy rain events. Then we also have what's called the trapping high here, where we may have some upper level disturbance that actually gets stuck across Southern Arizona. Again, increased moisture forcing from that event can help drive lots of thunderstorms. We can tend to see lots of flooding. And then what we have is our West Texas, New Mexico high, which is this one here on the bottom left. And that's kind of like, we call that the granddaddy of them all. It's, it's all or nothing pattern. So usually the beginning of the monsoon and the end of the monsoon, we'll see this kind of pattern where we have southwesterly flow. We may or may not have moisture, but as we get later into the season, this pattern is actually very conducive for pulling moisture from hurricanes or tropical systems up from the Gulf of California and into Arizona, as well as giving early season uh, low pressure systems can actually get pulled. Even while we're still in our monsoon pattern, we can get significant rain events. With all of that combined, um, we talked about NOAA's Climate Prediction Center forecast saying above normal temperatures. We also talked about how they were expecting, you know, equal chances for above, below, or right near normal uh, rainfall. So again, that wasn't telling us a whole lot. So we kind of dove a little bit deeper into the four factors we always like to look at. And from that, we're anticipating an earlier onset than normal. So we expect that intrusion, an initial intrusion of moisture, first rounds of those storms to actually get going before that July 7th um, kind of cutoff. And also, we're hoping that this early onset should help offset maybe what I'd end up being a lower 
uh, East Pac hurricane season. And so we're gonna go with a near normal rainfall for the monsoon. And what that basically means is 90 to maybe 110% of average. So that would be, you know, 2.7 inches to 3.3 inches when averaged across all of Maricopa County. So again, we're still expecting a busier season than last year, but maybe not quite a 2014. A couple other points I just wanna mention. It only takes one or two heavy rain events to reach the historical monsoon uh, rainfall quota. Uh, any location in the Phoenix Valley is subject to flooding or flash flooding. If enough rain falls um, in the proper duration, we don't need a big significant event. It can be very localized to your particular area, maybe your neighborhood. So you always want to keep that in the back of your mind. Now is the time to prepare, and we have a large amount of information on our website, as well as with our partners, NOAA National Weather Service, and again, following our, our different feeds. So with that, that's the outlook for the year. Let's all hope for rain.